So what's up, everybody? Like I said before, thank you guys for being so patient. Thank you guys for giving so much support throughout the whole entire year. While I was basically down for the count, I was going to catch up. I was a little bit worried about December because of the whole situation likes to strike people in December. So I was kind of like worried. Even though I'm not doing anything wrong, it's just I don't want that issue. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to have 344 and 345 put into one video and then 346 and 347 put into one video. That way I could be caught up. Once again, thank you so much for the support and love. Regardless of that, let's get into this. First of all, if you like anime, manga, reviews, discussions, spoilers, and theories, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, like the video. I'm switching with some false copyright strikes, so let's get this channel back to 5,000. Black Clover 344 official translations are out. This chapter was epic. It was so stoked. It was definitely worth the wait. Tabata, even though he got sick, unfortunately, it was much needed. He knows what the fandom wants, and this was well worth waiting almost three weeks for. I cannot believe what's going on in Black Clover right now. There's just too much hype things. I know a lot of people are going to say that nobody he dies in Black Clover, ah, da, da, da. but hey, still, when you're fighting a godlike entity like Lucius, it is what it is. I know I read some of you guys' comments as to what Lucius might do with Nas' brother, and I'll definitely talk about that. So, the start of this chapter, I did not expect to see Morris. I mean, I thought Morris was gone forever, but it makes sense as to why Lucius will bring Morris, and I'm pretty sure he was told by Ostroff and the future that he predicts that Morris will be a great asset. So, his plan to make sure that Lucifer comes out and half his heart is taken it makes sense as to why Lucius would bring back Morris and we know that Lucius is basically a godlike entity at this point I mean there's even a panel that literally has the trinity that has three crosses and Lucius is there I said that before in another video that Lucius might be the antichrist and I'm pretty sure this is basically just confirming Lucius is the antichrist I mean I know you guys were telling me that the last arc was basically the book of revelations when Lucius Pharaoh came out, I think it's still going on that narrative in a sense as Tavata takes that route because we know that he gets inspiration from Judaism, Christianity, and also Norse and Greek mythologies. So it makes sense as to why he's done that, but it's very interesting. I remember one time you guys said in the comments that it's possible that Morgan might come back into the story and it's starting to look like that. It would be very epic to see Not versus Morgan at the very last fight scene with Not. I would love to see that because obviously Not's story arc is still not complete i think he still needs to apologize to morgan i think this would be the best way if lucius brings back morgan obviously morgan would be under lucius's control and dominance so he's not gonna have that thinking power but once asta defeats him because we know asta and possibly yuno are going to defeat lucius together if not asta on his own that brief moment of time before everything's undone morgan could accept not's apology or you know say the typical good guy good brother thing and say you don't need to apologize i think that will be perfect if not actually like does that because it's epic i cannot believe what is going on right now there's just so many things and going back to the whole lucius being the antichrist you literally see him say to morris i'll give you as much salvation as i can so i mean at this point if you're saying that there's no divinity in black clover i mean lucius has been constantly proving that there is some type of divinity and we also see that three younger zagrati siblings dante vonica and xenon you see the grimoires meaning that they're still alive and i'm pretty sure because Beelzebub is following Lucius basically I'm pretty sure Beelzebub will give Xenon's soul back but it'll be very epic to see Xenon back as a paladin and I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen this chapter is so hype I can't picture what's going on here the crazy thing about all this like I said before is that Lucius has godlike powers Morris even says it when Lucius literally healed him because Morris is all bandaged up looking like half of his body is completely gone and then Lucius just touches him and Morris regrows an arm and his leg. This is so OP. I have no idea how Asta has any chance against him. I know that with Zetan, apparently people who master this can strike the heavens. I think that might be a metaphor, especially what's going on now because Lucius is god tier. Morris is happy saying the exact same thing I'm saying about Lucius being god tier. Lucius touches Morris's head. At this moment, you see Morris with basically like a blank face. Also, another crazy thing is that Lucius killed Morris's blindness. I forgot to mention that. That's huge. But 
but going back to Morris's blank face, that's just basically Lucius doing the same thing he did to the sister Lily, but with Morris. So now Morris doesn't really think for himself. He follows the will of Lucius. So anything Morris would have done is only going to go towards helping Lucius now. So he's no longer an independent thinker. It's just another showcase of how powerful Lucius is. This is the part that was really cool. Lucius says to sister Lily, there is an island nation far away known as the land of the rising sun. It has a future that's starting to destabilize. As far as we concern, it's an inconvenient future, one that can threaten our world peace. Will you take the paladins and cut that bad future short? Sister Lily goes, yes, sir. She's basically one of the head generals of Lucius's army. First of all, I want to talk about how cool it is that Sister Lily having such a strong devotion to Lucius, who is godlike powers, because she is a nun. You know, I said this before in another video, but it's really a good reference that Tabata did this because Sister Lily has always followed God, but now there's this godlike character who's claiming that he's basically God at this point, and she follows him devotedly. I'm pretty sure that's why Lucius decided to chose Sister Lily, not only to hurt Asta and make him stunned because he's going to have a hard time defeating someone that he cares about, but also finding someone that's so devoted to divinity and God will help his case when he becomes divinity and a godlike person. Another thing I want to talk about is it seems like Lucius doesn't know that Asta's still alive. He only sees that the future is being destabilized from what we're getting from this dialogue because he would have said, hey, look for Asta. But that's not what he said here. He said, cut that unstabilized future short. There's something off here. And that's kind of cool because what Asta brings, he brings uncertainty to this mana world. And it would be really cool if Lucius is becoming Sinbad of Magi, where he basically becomes one with like the nature force. He basically becomes God in a sense. So it's similar to what's going on in Black Clover, where the main bad guy becomes just godlike. In an instant, Sister Lily and the three paladins appear. But they appear in front of the water where we learned from before that a five-headed dragon or a dragon attacked the village and it was for a divine maiden to stop that attack. But the waters of that part of the land of Rising Sun became tainted, which is why you have like fish that have devil horns and stuff like that. It's crazy how these paladins have literally created the five-headed dragon from the legend. And it's about to attack the land of the rising sun. So I wonder, is it possible that there's going to be a divine maiden that interjects what's going on here? I mean, at this point, the only divine maiden that we know is basically Sister Lily. But I wonder if there's going to be a goddess that comes in. One of the divine race people that are actually born divinity. Not like Lucius who just gradually became divinity because of his magic. But an actual entity that was born as a deity comes in and stops this five-headed dragon from attacking. Because the legend legend has to come from somewhere. Legends usually have some source of truth to it, even though it's exaggerated. So like I said before, there's definitely going to be a divine coming into the story very soon. This is beyond epic. Sister Lily is there with a smile and the halo saying, we'll make the land of the rising sun the sacrifice for world peace. And if you think about it, it's kind of interesting because it was a divine maiden that stopped the dragon. And now it looks like a divine maiden is the reason why the dragon is appearing again. I like how Black Clover is playing with that because this is actually based on a real Japanese mythology. And right then and there, you see the Ryu Seven. You see them saying, who would have thought we'll be facing against the legendary five-headed dragon? As long as the Ryu Seven are here, we won't let you lay a finger on the land of the rising sun. We see familiar faces, and one face I'm pretty sure we're not familiar with. The woman next to Ichiga. I don't believe we ever seen her yet. At the end of the chapter, get introduced to the strongest Ryu Seven, quote unquote. In the distance far away, you see the five-headed dragon. Asa's on the floor as someone's telling him say come on kid is that all you got you're fighting against the strongest of the real seven here nobody cares about grits or how fired up you are just show me what you can do this real seven he looks like somebody that's been into a lot of battles he has like a scar on his face this is going to be my black clover 345 review this chapter was very interesting i really enjoyed it black clover 345 was basically a transition chapter now that we see more what's going on we got introduced basically new of the real seven so the first page basically gives you a recap as as to what exactly happened during the time, what's going on with the Ryu 7 versus the dragon. This is right before we got to see that Ryu was talking to Asta and he was basically saying that they need him. However, it's important that he polishes up his strength because he's trying to learn Ryu Zen. You know, it's interesting now that I've seen the other chapters and reading 347 and all that stuff, you see here that it looks like Ichiga really did have some type of, I guess, jealousy towards Asta having favoritism with Ryu. It's just kind of sad because how much she looks up 
up to Ryu and now that we know what's going on with her, it's crazy. And basically Ryu is saying, if you're not focused, you might end up dying. And then you see like a tree in the middle and a bunch of the Shinjuku Shrine Gates. So whatever that tree is, it has to do something with Divinity. I'm not entirely sure what that is all about. Maybe that's the first place that Ryu's in or the person that cut the sky actually was there. So maybe that's the case. I'm not entirely sure. But you see Asta training with the strongest Ryuzen. He's just getting tons of attacks, dodging it. The strongest Ryuzen is not really happy. He wants to fight and get this over with. But Ryu basically told him, hey, I have to fight you and take you on for real. And Asta's realizing that this guy's insanely strong. In accepting exchange, he doesn't even have a chance. But thanks to the other Ryu 7 with the guitar or the banjo, I guess I'm not entirely sure what it's called. Asta's getting healed and recharged, which is interesting because if this guy was in the battlefield, I'm pretty sure the other Ryu 7 wouldn't have a problem with that fly had a dragon or just basically with the whole entire paladin which makes me think like is it possible that all the paladins are going to get rehealed and then we're actually going to have the ryu 7 and asta versus the paladins i think that's what's going to happen like full charge or full energized ryu 7 versus the paladin and then asta is obviously going to be there to stop all the magical attacks i think that's going to be awesome man i love rereading chapters after you see other chapters because it gives you more insight as to what's going to happen in the future fujio i'm guessing that's his name is he's saying the guy with the banjo looking thing he says ryu wants to help you out so i'll be your backup and then asta's like please do <laughs> asta versus the strongest ryu 7 they're clashing i like it you know it's very interesting it makes me wonder once asta's done with this training will he be able to do anything similar to the ryu 7 like in terms of zetan like did he master it because we know in chapter 347 he gets back to the battlefield so i wonder how's that gonna be like and the strongest ryu 7 is saying basically now i understand why ryu is so into you and why he left this part to me i'm guessing he's starting to see how strong asta really is but i'm telling you all this is epic because imagine asta with anti-magic devil union and then fully masters that's him. this guy's unstoppable you know he's going to be able to do physical attacks to the next level he's going to be able to do anti-magic attacks plus enhance with the devil union it's just beyond epic the strong reviews evan says basically to asta you're full of doubt your sword doesn't lie to me there's hesitation in the way you fight your convictions aren't solid unlike you i can cut everything i see the strongest Ryu 7 just does a slice and it cuts Asta but it also cuts a lot of the Shinto Shrine's gates all the way in the background and then he says this is why I'm the strongest and I believe that we were wondering why Asta seems like he's kind of messed up right now it's because he's been holding back I wonder what confidence was installed to him because if he still has doubts and he seems very confident when he saw you know Sister Lily and all that and the Paladins when he came in I wonder if they told the truth of what exactly happened yami maybe only the ryu 7 besides ishika know exactly what happened or maybe just the two strongest ryu 7 i don't know but it seems like asta kind of knew what was going on at the end as to how yami was but maybe he has some doubts that maybe i was trained by the messed up leader but even though deep down asta knows yami he knows that he wouldn't do it there's still doubts you know you could always have doubts on the person especially when you have somebody that's close to him like a sister do a huge claim like that with saying that i'm pretty sure asta at the end of 347 he got his confidence and motivation back that's probably going to be explained in chapter 348 watch it even here he's saying he can protect sister lily lucius got him he panicked a little he thought he couldn't be able to get any stronger he couldn't be ichiga and he even thought that a guy like him can't even become the wizard king <laughs> the strong reviews of and just like who do you think you're fighting you're fighting against the strongest warrior around how are you going to be looking at your stomach like nasal gazing it's like yeah you got to be looking at your opponent especially the opponent is strong that's kind of like disrespectful in a sense and i understand why he's doing that honestly even at this time he was thinking like maybe you know could have done better it could have protected lucius and he made it to a grand magic knight first and he's still getting stronger and you know that makes me wonder like how does you know feel right now and i know you know is feeling like he just lost his brother he doesn't know what Asta is but what happens when sister lily if she escapes or if somehow she becomes back to normal will she let lucius know will other people know that Asta's is still alive it's all interesting to me because if is still alive and lucius knows that when he bring tons and tons of paladins to towards the land of the rising sun it's gonna be very interesting i'm telling y'all and then you go back to the five headed dragon and it looks like asta may have had like an aha moment but we go back to the five headed dragon you see the fox lady and she's kind of shy and she says what am i supposed to do with this thing it's all over we're done sister lily is basically like 
Oh, that poor little girl. At least I can give her a painless death. Ichiga's like, quick whining. Take out your sword. The fox girl's like, Ichiga, you're an ogre. Looks like she drew her sword, and that's what started her crazy side. I guess maybe her crazy side might have to do with her sword. I really would like to learn more about how does she flip so quickly. That's basically all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video was putting two videos together. Sorry for the wait. I'm just doing this to catch up, but these two videos will be together. Let me know how you feel about Black Clover 344 and 345. Did you enjoy these two chapters? Let me know what you feel about the Fox Lady having multiple personalities. What do you think about Asta and his self-doubt? What made him gain his confidence again? Like if you like the video, comment, subscribe, and I'm out of here.